Matthew Embry, our official IndyCar contributor, calling us from WSBT up in South Bend. Also talk a little college football uh, with us breaking down the breaking news of McLaren. I do apologize. We had a little bit of audio problems there, but sometimes that happens with live radio. But, hey, it's that time. We'll be back with superfans Adam Jividen and Kyle Courtney talking about their Steelers and their Browns as we get ready for our 2019 NFL preview season. And, of course, coming up at 10 o'clock, calling us from the practice field of Philadelphia, Ed Kratz, beat writer for the Philadelphia Eagles, and also our official college football contributor, Rick Riggin, and Mo from the BS Sports Show, all in tow. Stand by. We'll be back right here on the Balance Radio Network. Tonight. Double trouble, double the fun. At African Safari Wildlife Park in Port Clinton, Ohio, see the largest antelope on Earth, the giant eland, and the ugliest creature on Earth, the African warthog. There's so much to see and do, including the Midwest's only drive through safari. See the animals. See live educational shows. Feel the excitement. Have your picture taken with a python or cockatoo. Feel the adventure. Shop the Simba Lodge gift shop with items available from around the globe. Visit the snack bar or picnic facilities. Enjoy a pony or camel ride. Or cheer your favorite porker on to victory in the famous Pork Chop Down. Bring your family to see the rare and exotic animals at African Safari Wildlife Park in Port Clinton, Ohio. Just take Route 2 to the Route 53 North exit and follow the sign. Only 17 miles west of Cedar Point via Route 6. Open every day, rain or shine. When you don't go to Geico.com, car insurance can be confusing. Like Swedish techno confusing. Bark, bark, meow, meow. Dance with me, purple cow. Bark, bark, meow, meow. Ooh, you lovely cow. Geico makes it easy. With 24-7 access, all you have to do is go to Geico.com and you can save money on car insurance. It just makes sense. Unlike, you know. Dance with me, purple cow. I like your mood. When you don't go to Geico.com, car insurance can be hard. Like early 90s heavy metal hard. I'm yelling and screaming and I'm loud. Roar. Geico makes it easy. You can review and update your policy or report a claim on Geico.com or the Geico mobile app. Because shouldn't we all have a little less stress in our lives? I'm not even upset about it. All right, welcome back to Balance. Thank you, Matthew Embry, WSVT up in South Bend, our official IndyCar contributor, breaking down that breaking news. McLaren uh, doing a full-time 2020 season uh, next year with IndyCar, uh, Chevy, and Schmidt Motorsports, and Arrows. We'll see how all that plays out. But it's time to kick off our annual NFL preview uh, show. To help us do that is two super fans, Adam Jividen, super fan of the Browns, and Kyle Courtney, super uh, fan of the Steelers. Adam, how are you, sir? I'm doing good, Tom. How are you, man? Fantastic. And uh, Kyle, we're gonna we're gonna start with you, Kyle Courtney, super fan of the Steelers. First of all, let's just get it off our shoulders. Let's just talk about it. I know he's not a Steeler anymore, but what the hell's going on with Antonio Brown? Oh my God, what a diva! Go ahead. Oh man, I, I think that. that... <laughs> It's it's just 
the, the stories that have come out, you, you kind of wonder at this point how many of those things that Pittsburgh was able to kind of keep under the rug. Uh, but the, the stories that have come out just basically in the past, I don't know, week of him having frostbitten feet from, cry, from cryotherapy because he didn't wear the right shoes and then fighting the NFL and the Raiders on wearing the, a helmet that he's had for 10 seasons. And it's just it, – you kind of sit there and just go, man, the things that the, – the, the hills that this guy wants to die on are very low – just seem just don't make any sense to most people. And that, you know, you had quotes coming out from the Raiders camp of people being like, this is the most bizarre thing we've ever seen. So, you know, you, you do wonder at some point, like, is this a health thing at some point, or is he just truly just that big of a diva and doesn't care about it? Or is this like early onset CTE? And maybe that helmet was contributing to some of the problems that he's had. Um, but, you know, I, I think that it's it's been a really quiet camp for the Steelers, and I think we can see why. <laughs> well, absolutely. And, you know, we don't have time to get into hard knocks. Yeah, you know, I, 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 it's okay. I mean, I think I watch social media after hard knocks, and they're thinking that the, the Raiders are going to be the greatest thing since peanut butter jelly in 2020. I think not. Uh, but I guess, uh, you know, that's, that's a well-produced show. It's a good show. But, uh <laughs> They, they put Antonio Brown in a different light than what the rest of us are, are looking at. And I know you guys won your first preseason game over the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, what are your thoughts on that uh, as we look down um, this past week uh, starting preseason game? Yeah, it was really good to get – first of all, Devin Bush, uh, was, it was really, really good to see him out there. Um, he had 10 tackles in the, first, uh, in the first half. So he was out there. He was flying around. He was – it wasn't just – you know, on he was doing he was in coverage. He was uh, weaving through the trash to get to running backs behind the line of scrimmage. He hit the quarterback a couple of times. So he he was showing all of the things that made him uh, the a top the, the top ten, the number ten pick and the reason that the Steelers traded up for him. And quite honestly, a lot of those flashes they've really been missing since having Ryan Chazier on the line. Um, he is a rookie. I know he's going to make mistakes. Uh, he he's not going to be perfect, but I think that that definitely there's there's a lot of of uh, hype surrounding him, and I expect him to be out there week one against the Patriots, uh, manning the middle of that defense. Well, we'll see what we'll the, see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> Anytime you can beat the the Patriots uh, in week one, that's something. Uh, Adam Jevitt in, uh, super fan of the Browns. Uh, Adam, I know you and Kyle know each other. We all know each other. We got the band back together. But Adam, uh, what do you got for Kyle regarding the Steelers? I, I mean, Devin Bush is fine. You know, he can he can have ten tackles because at the end of the day he can't cover Odell Beckham. <laughs> Is that some of your uh, your hatred for Michigan uh feeding through a little bit there? Hey, hey, man, man, the only way a Michigan the only way a Michigan player can get worse is if he gets drafted by the Steelers. <laughs> Ooh. 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 Right between the rib and the and the heart there. Uh, <laughs> Kyle, you know, you did mention the camp's been kind of quiet, and, you know, last year was the big soap opera of it all. Mike tobleson has got to get control of that locker room. I think he kind of let the uh, – and I'm probably going to get uh, uh, in trouble for saying this, but uh, he let the – in the inmates uh, run the asylum. Uh, don't come after me, everybody. That's been said a million times. It's a phrase. It's a, it's, it's a phraseology. Uh, but Mike tobleson has got to get it together. He's going to be on the hot seat this year. Yeah, and I, I think that Tomlin's leadership has always been very much uh, giving the players agency over the culture that they want to create. So he's always he's always looked at, at the team as if you want to create you want to create a really good environment here, then everybody has to kind of buy into that. And coming in when he did, you know, 14 years ago, he had a very veteran locker room that had a very good culture in place. And instead of coming in and trying to put his stamp on all that, a lot of times he's like, look, I'm going to let you guys do what you're going to do. And that had worked really, really, really well for a long time until you had a few players like Bell and, and Brown that took that line and that freedom and made it go pretty far in the other direction. So you, you have these cases, but if you look at the history of him as a coach, um, most everybody li- loves playing for him because of the fact that he does give them the freedom to be able to do that. But he also expects a high level of, of play and success for them when they're on the field. Obviously the last few seasons, they've, they've, they've had a pretty good run. Um, last season, they ended not quite how they wanted to, but 
I mean, they've, they've, they've seen a long line of success with that type of leadership, but I agree with you. Um, if they struggle a lot this season, then I, he did get a single year extension, but I mean, I think we know everything that coaching contracts don't mean anything. Um, they, they, if he, they're not seeing the amount of success that they want to see out of him, I wouldn't be shocked to see him out the door. But I, but I also think that Tomlin is very heavily tied to Ben Roethlisberger and Kevin Colbert. When all, I think all three of them are going to leave when con, when um, Ben's contract is done, and walk away and let the Steelers kind of go through a new leadership process. So while I understand him being on the hot seat, there's also this feeling of letting Ben finish his career before you move on to a new coach. You know, we only got you here for a limited amount of time. I appreciate you jump, jumping on with us, uh, Kyle. Uh, but all joking aside, I mean, when you look at this Devin Bush, and you look at him on film and you look at what he's been able to do. I mean, it looks to me like the Steelers are putting a lot of stock in Devin Bush. Do you think they made the right move for trading up to get him? I think they did. It was an issue that they had last season that they weren't able to really, they weren't able to get somebody on uh, an athletic inside linebacker. Um, not having Shazier as that true playmaker in the middle of the field it is, is a role that you know Ryan or Troy Polamalu had played before him. Did this sideline to sideline guy that can literally just that can wreck. Uh, offensive game plans. They didn't have that last season. So having that really athletic middle inside linebacker to to force teams to really consider how they're going to attack you, somebody that's really fast, can go after, uh, can be a run stuffer, can be really good in coverage against tight ends, which is something that they've had a lot of, lot of issues with. Um, yeah, I think that it's, it's really important for them to, they, they gave up a lot of draft capital to, to get him, but I think when you have a massive need and there's a talent there that fits your scheme that just fills that need, you you, you give what you need to in order to get it. So I, I think as long as he doesn't get injured, he's very well going to be in the conversation for defensive player of the year because he's going to get – or defensive rookie of the year. Um, he has a, he'll have a lot of opportunities uh, to succeed. He's going to ma- uh, get a whole lot of tackles, probably a few turnovers. And so I expect him to have a really, really good season barring injury. Another rookie that you guys picked up, uh, finally, we'll give us a final word here. Uh, Justin Lane, quarter, uh, cornerback, obviously uh, uh, having his own injury issues, but uh, uh, all, a lot of eyes are on him as well. Yeah, he, he struggled a little bit yesterday. Um, I know that he's, he's, he's a little bit of a project, quite honestly. He did, he did start uh, at, in uh, Michigan State as a wide receiver. So then they transitioned him to a corner. So he's still learning the position. He's still learning the nuances associated with it. Um, I, I don't, they really don't want him to play very much, even though he had a third round uh, pick on him this year. I don't think that they expect him to play a whole lot this season. They have a lot of depth in front of him. Um, I think next season is what they're expecting him to really step up and, and start playing a little bit more nickel corner and, and being a little bit better in that role. Uh, I believe that's, that's kind of what they see him as his, his uh, essential position to start with. And that's where that used to be a, a kind of a throwaway position. Now with so many uh, three wide receiver sets, everyone's running 11 and 12 consistently. You need to have a really, really good uh, nickel corner to match up against some of those uh faster shifty guys in the middle and tight ends on the outside so yeah I, I expect him to be really good next year <laughs> Kyle Corny super uh, fan of the Steelers we always appreciate you jumping on hope you have a good season and hopefully uh, we will be able to have you back on before uh, you don't win the Super Bowl this year <laughs> <laughs> thanks so much guys and Adam all, all right, the we'll- best to the Browns I, I expect a whole lot of really good things from them just hopefully not two games a year against the Steelers <laughs> <laughs> and drop Mike and he's out Adam Jimmy <laughs> Adam uh, I tell you what what a win you, you, I mean uh, you guys it's only preseason I mean you could have took it easy on, on the Redskins come on are you are you trying to make a statement are you trying to make a point should we just go ahead and give you the Lombardi and call it a season you know, I, I think they actually needed to come out and make a statement. There's been a lot of, you know, after the Odell Beckham trade, after the draft, uh, everybody was saying the Browns are the next big thing. And then the more time went on in the off season, the more people just kind of went, well, it's the same old Browns. And I don't know if they can trust Freddie Kitchens, their new coach. And 
I, I don't know if it's, and so I think, I 